So in this video, we are going to learn about the detailed roadmap of DevOps, especially when you are in 2022. And this video is going to help you make sure that you become the DevOps engineer, which you are aspiring to. Okay, so first of all, let's try to understand why there is so much hype around this word of DevOps and why people are actually quite interested in becoming DevOps. So obviously salary is one of the reason. But if we look into the Google Trends, so obviously you can see this is the Google Trend for various job applications. So full stack development, front end development, back end development. And this is the trend which is in blue color for DevOps. So you can see this is actually the last five years of roadmap. I should say the last five years of Google Trend. You can see this is not stopping at all. This is not stopping at all. Now, why that is required, we obviously understand what is the meaning of DevOps and how DevOps work. Obviously, if you don't know, we have a video in detail where you can understand that. But if I want to give you a very gist of it, DevOps help you improve your efficiency as well as productivity as a developer and as a company. So probably this is the biggest reason we are seeing this kind of a trend, which is showing that a lot of company, a lot of clients are hiring people who have the capabilities or I should say abilities of being a DevOps engineer. Now, before I start with the roadmap, I want to give you some spoilers if I may. These are the few points you need to keep in mind when you're planning to learn DevOps. So first of all, this presentation may be overwhelming because it is overwhelming for some people if you're starting your career right now or planning to start the DevOps because it has so many different uh, things involved. Secondly, don't be scared of this overwhelmness because again, this is part of it. Third, practice is key. Obviously, you will say, okay, there are so many things. How will I learn all of them? Well, obviously, the answer is practice. And finally, consistency is going to be your best friend until and unless you are consistent in your learning, in your journey towards DevOps. This is going to be impossible. I want to be very upfront with you on this. Okay, now we have to focus on the components which are going to be part of your DevOps journey. Now, I want to mention one thing. I have mentioned these components, but yes, again, they may sound overwhelming. There are steps more than that. But I feel that if you are a beginner, these are the vital or I should say important steps that you should be taking care of when you are starting your journey with DevOps. And obviously, when you start learning these, you will open up the other areas which are going to be sort of a deep dive into certain of these parameters. So you have to make sure that you are part of these. Now, what are these components? Obviously, programming language, operating system, server management, network and security. Again, important concept. Then we have infrastructure as a code one of the most important part of DevOps journey. Then continuous integration and deployment. Obviously, DevOps is nothing without that. Then analyze your application and the infrastructure. And finally, explore DevOps on cloud. Now, this is optional. Now, this is optional. Obviously, if your company is not using DevOps on cloud, obviously, you can skip this part or maybe you're not planning to go into cloud. In that case, you can miss, uh, I should say, skip this part. But I would suggest that if I'm a beginner right now, if I'm not exploring this point, I'm actually leaving a lot of money on table. So you have to make sure that since a lot of companies are moving towards cloud, you should have the understanding of DevOps on cloud. Okay, so the first component in our DevOps journey is a programming language. Now, I want to be very specific. It is quite obvious that you need to know a programming language. That is why I've mentioned that for obvious reasons, you need to know a programming language. Obviously, you can start with Python or JavaScript, which are actually quite hot languages, if I may. But you have to understand that language of your choice is also welcome because for obvious reason, DevOps is not a specific or I should say hard coded tool which has to be used in a certain way but it is quite flexible so you are open to any language which you want to use until and unless you're not following what is supposed to be done in DevOps it is not going to create any issue for you so obviously I have mentioned Python as well as JavaScript but yes if you feel like Avinash I don't want to learn these new languages I already know .NET I already know uh, like let's say PHP am I comfortable with that yes you are comfortable with that and you can use those languages Okay, now the next component is obviously operating system concepts. Now, you should be aware of these following things like process management, input output management, file system management, virtualization. Now, if I'm a beginner right now, 
this can be a bit overwhelming. Avinash, why am I supposed to learn about operating system? For obvious reasons, you have to manage the operations part of it. Previously, that was managed by someone else. But now, since you are part of this DevOps, you have to make sure that you are able to manage the operating system as well. Now, one of the most important point a lot of people ask me, like, what is the operating system I should be going ahead? I would say that if you are starting right now, go ahead with the Linux fundamentals, if I may, because this is the most used operating system, I would say, by the companies, because obviously that is free of cost. But if your preference is Windows, you can go ahead with that and you are free to use it because obviously that is also an operating system. But you have to understand this is going to be an important component in your journey because without that, it is going to be very difficult for you. Okay, now what will happen when something goes wrong? Obviously, server management. So you should have the skills of server management and I would say that start learning the server management because the administration part should be taken care by you. Okay, and you should be friendly with terminal or I should say command prompt if I may on Windows operating system because these are the few components if I may or these are the few requirements which are required as a DevOps engineer because you have to make sure that whatever operating system you are using, you cannot say, hey, it is not working. That is not my problem because your boss is going to come and say, hey, since you are part of this DevOps, you have to make sure that you are part of the server management team and you can manage the server and you can make sure that it is up and running without any issues. Okay, now comes the important aspect of it, network and security until and unless your application or the infrastructure is secure nobody is going to use it. So you have to understand that you have to learn the concepts of networking and security. Obviously, you can say, Avinash, I am not a networking guy. I'm not a security guy. Can I do DevOps? Will I be able to perform the activities which are required in DevOps? Obviously, you can learn that. Otherwise, if you want to understand from your personalized perspective, obviously, there is a link which is given in the description of this video. You can reach to our experts and they can assist you what is the right path for you. Now, as I mentioned that network and security part has to be there. So you have to ma make sure that your application as well as infrastructure is secured. So few of the concepts, obviously, which you have to look into it, the SSL part, the certification part, the encryption part. Obviously, I have not mentioned a lot more part of it because it may get overwhelming. But you have to understand the components of network and security are important aspect of your DevOps learning journey. Okay, now you are good at coding, but can your code create an infrastructure? Can it provision your infrastructure? This is the next and the most important part of DevOps journey because infrastructure as a code is an important aspect of it. So you have to uh, like learn the concepts of containers. Obviously, you can get started with Docker, the configuration part of it. So you can start with Ansible, Chef, Puppet and obviously infrastructure provisioning. So you can get started with Terraform, cloud formation, which is basically on AWS. So you have to understand this is again the most important aspect of it because Usually what happens when you have a huge infrastructure, it is not possible for you to, to do everything manually. So you have to use the concept of infrastructure as a code so you can automate the process of provisioning your infrastructure, which plays a very vital role in the journey of automation. And it is again an important part of your DevOps learning as well as DevOps journey. Now comes a part, I would say, heart of DevOps. Without heart, a human body is nothing. And without CI and continuous development, DevOps is nothing. So you have to be aware of these concepts of continuous integration and deployment. Now, obviously, you can use the tools like Jenkins and Travis CI. Obviously, there are a lot many tools compared to what I have written. But I want to make sure that you are aware of these tools because these are some of the most used tools in the DevOps journey, especially when I talk about continuous a continuous integration and continuous deployment. Now, obviously, I feel like as a learner right now that it is getting a bit overwhelming. I want to mention one thing. It is overwhelming, but you have to understand it comes with more responsibility. And once you get more responsibility, obviously, your career growth is quite more. Okay, so I have learned a lot of things. What is next? What am I supposed to do, Avinash? Well, now you have to learn the skills of analyzing your application from inside the application as well as the infrastructure. You cannot simply say, hey, I have coded everything. My infrastructure is up and running. That is it. My job is done. I'm going home. 
no you have to stop there you have to make sure that if your app goes down your client will lose his sleep you have to understand this thing if the app goes down obviously the client is going to call you and they will say hey what is going on and you cannot say hey it is not my responsibility to manage that you have to analyze your application on production which is again on the production servers and you have to analyze your infrastructure on production because these are hard coupled if i may if anything goes wrong ultimately the application which is running goes down and if that goes down obviously you will receive some calls from your client which are not going to be good calls obviously for understandable reasons okay so this is kind of the optional part if i may but yes if i were you i would say that this is the important part that you should not skip for a very specific reason everyone is moving on cloud and that is why i said explore devops on cloud now i want to mention one thing if you can say hey you told me about devops you're not mentioning anything about cloud and like am i supposed to learn cloud as well well obviously you're not supposed to learn cloud as well because if you have some basic understanding of cloud you will be good but i would suggest that you should be focusing on azure devops aws devops and google cloud devops which are sort of one of the few of the most important use tools especially when you have to manage your devops i should say cycle on cloud but again they are not going to stop your journey from learning devops now obviously you can say hey am i what what type of cloud am i supposed to learn well in that case i would obviously suggest that you should not make any guesses because obviously your career is at risk i would suggest use the link which is given in the description of the video so that the person who has the knowledge can assist you now obviously cloud sounds very difficult when i'm starting as a beginner devops sounds difficult now you're giving me cloud but again i would suggest that if you're looking for a proper career growth that you should be making sure that cloud is a vital part of it and obviously we are releasing videos where we have speakers who have cloud certifications from there you can understand why they are getting the certifications of cloud so that they can actually grow their career so that is it for this video i just want to understand if you have any confusion any doubt put them in the comment if you need a career guidance obviously in that case there is a link in the description of this video or also in the comment section click that link fill in the details and someone from our team will make sure that your career doubt is clear because this is what we stand for so thank you very much for watching this video and we will see you in the next one